All right, welcome back, you guys, to Behind the Bikini. I am Sean Hector Lewis, and joining me is... I am Jordan Brandon. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to episode number two here, Behind the Bikini. So um, it's been a week. We are planning on doing these once a week so that we can keep you guys updated on what's going on um, with us, with the sport, with clients, with current trends, all the things, all of the things. <laughs> so lots um, of things and lots of things. So with that, going into this week, it's a it's a big week for you, Jordan, right? Because you're starting your Olympia prep. I did. I started my Olympia prep on Monday. I had about three weeks off from Tahoe Pro Win of a diet break. Mm -hmm. um, just did some intuitive eating. I kept checking in with Jamie and we did a diet break the first week and then everything was going well. And then we did another diet break and I checked in again and then we finished off the third week with another diet break. So that was super nice just to kind of have some flexibility, have some date nights out with my husband. Um, we had a lot of celebratory things to, to do with um, my husband and his coaching and he won two pro cards at North American. So it's just so nice just to live life for three weeks and have some normalcy. And that is a, an important part of our sport is finding balance. Um, so yeah, I'm sitting about two pounds up or so from stage weight as of today. I went a little ham on Sunday. That was my last day. We we, we did a couple of dinners and things like that. So it will come back down. I'm yeah, not well, you've got eight weeks. You got eight weeks for got two eight pounds. Weeks. I, I think you'll be all right. <laughs> yes, we're fine. So, so when, really when you excited. do a diet break, what does that mean? Do you just not track or what do you do for a diet break? Some days I'll track, some days I don't. Like if I know I'm going to be going out to eat, I'll eat like a really big breakfast. I'll go train really hard and maybe have like a small snack and then just go like enjoy dinner. But honestly, like it was, it was pretty low key. I did a lot of sushi. Um, I just had like, if I wanted something, I had it and restrict myself. Like we were on the road one day, uh, we were in Charleston and we went to our favorite donut shop and I went and got a donut that morning. Not something I usually do, something I wanted. That's what I wanted to do. Okay. Um, and then up until Sunday, Mike, I was right at stage weight. So I, it was just, it, my body was responding really, really well and probably just kind of wanted that break. Um, and then some days I'll track, like the next day I'll just track just to try to like stay on track and, you know, bring it down a little bit. Plus my digestion, I just want my digestion to stay good. Um, but yeah, pretty low key, just staying on top of my water. Really nothing changes. I still did cardio every day, still trained every day, just not so strict, not counting sodium and things like that. Right, 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 right. <laughs> so, so when you go on a diet break, is it for like a couple of days or is it like, what do you... What's the, the length? The initial int intention was a couple of days. Okay. Um, and then, um, so from the win, I did a few days of diet break. And I think I checked in with Jamie on like Wednesday or something. I usually checked in with her on Fridays, but she wanted to like keep an eye on me, make sure I wasn't going crazy. And then my, my weight actually dropped um, oh. when we first started. So she was like, okay, your body's like in this, so let's continue. So yeah. then we just kept kind of monitoring it as we went. Um, and my, like I said, my weight was just maintaining. So we were happy with it. And how's your look? So, cause I'm going to talk about that with my whole prep situation. So how's your look as far as your, you know, your weight, weight is one thing, but yeah. do you, do you see I'm, I'm definitely different? a little softer. Like okay. I'm not as like hard and yeah. dense and, um, you know, to, my water is up and things like that. So just a little softer, but honestly, I still have lines and still have abs. So I'm, I, I'm just not as sucked down. I call right. it as, as I usually am. Yeah. Um, but I, I like this look. This is a, this is a like a nice look for me. You yeah. Know, going into like a, after three weeks of being off, so I'm I'm happy with it. So what's the goal in the next eight weeks? What do you want to do? Just tighten up, or what is the what is the plan? Yeah, I think that's a I think that that is a good question. That is not something else. To be, <laughs> like, are we trying to get maybe a little bit leaner than I was in Tahoe? I mean, feedback was to come in the same, but you know, depending. I think that we talked about on the last post, podcast, Tarek was really descriptive in saying like today you were the perfect leaner. Right. Who knows? So, you know, in another show or at the Olympia, I would say usually my stage weight is about 118. I'm If I'm estimating, I think I would like to get down to like 116, like okay. go hard and then just kind of slowly fill out and find a look and then kind of cruise into the show. But already this is such a much better place physically and mentally than I was last year going into the Olympia because I had a break. Mm -hmm. I've been fed now. I have energy, um, not dieted down and just, you know, crawling my way to the Olympia. So I'm already feeling so much more positive about this next go around. And that's a huge piece of it is the whole mental part of it. People just don't, they, they really underestimate the brain ties into the rest of the body. You know what I mean? Like 100%. Where, where your thoughts go, your body follows. Yeah. 
And it's just yeah. like, you're not, you're not pleasant to be around either when no. you're in that kind of mind space. I mean, my poor husband last year and Jamie, what they were dealing with, but now this is going to be, I just want to go have fun. Finally. Yeah. Like I just completely different experience. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, it's one of those things too. Like I, I know I have a lot of girls that I work with when they get done with a show, like right after the show's over with, they're like, Oh, I want to go to the next one. I'm like, can you, can you just wait till Monday? Right. <laughs> like, wait till Monday to make the decision because yes. I know what's going to happen is you're going to go out to eat tonight. You're going to have, you know, your, your burger or whatever. And then you're going to go out to eat tomorrow for breakfast. And then you're not going to want to do it again. And like, you know, it's like, it's one of those things like give your mind a, a chance to settle in and figure out if this is where you actually want to go, figure out if your body's capable of doing it, all those kinds of things. Cause sometimes taking a break is the right call. Sometimes it's not about pushing to the next one. Um, you know, in your scenario last year, you kind of didn't have a choice. You you had to put, keep pushing, <laughs> you know what I mean? Absolutely. So, you know, but you know, you, you did have the unique opportunity this year that if you wanted to, to, to continue to compete, you could have, I could have, so, you know, you, you, but you chose to take a, take a step back and take a step off the, foot off the gas pedal and, and give yourself a little bit of a break, which I think is, is a, is a smart move too. You know yeah, what I mean? Because my mental needed it, mm -hmm. you know? And I think that's where a lot of people go wrong is that, you know, it's like, we are so mentally strong in this sport. You have to be, but there is a point where for all of us that there's a break, yep. there's a breaking point. Yep. Um, and I think too many people kind of try to push past that. If you're already feeling food focused, if you're already feeling run down, if you're already tight taking bites and cheats here and there, probably almost time to call in call it call it quit or yeah. take a break um, yeah too many people keep trying to push that envelope and try to you know what can i get away with um mm -hmm. and it's just a slippery slope from there well especially when you're so close too because like you know for you last year you were always in that top five and it's like you're so close to getting that that win you want to keep pushing you want to keep going you know a lot of these girls when they're on the national level same thing top fives if you keep getting top fives you want to keep pushing you're so close to that pro card you know what i mean but sometimes your body just doesn't want to go there or sometimes you just need to get off stage and go make some changes so you can get into that winner's circle you know 100 percent so, and I know I'm, I'm, I'm guilty of that myself. I did that a lot, you know, through my, through my whole career. And I, I, I said, <laughs> one thing I said to Jamie when I got done with the competing last year was I said, I don't want to do this again where I have to do this much cardio. Cause I hate it. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I, I will do anything to not have to do 90 minutes of cardio because this sucks. That's hot. You know, and I, I only had to do I've it for two, for two weeks. I only had to yeah. do it for two weeks, but it, it's still like, it's rough on your body. It's really oh. rough. And me, like my brain too, because I, I'm not that person that can like do work while I'm doing cardio. Some people will do work while they're doing, I can't do that. Like I, yeah, I can't do that. I'm not that person. So I, I end up sitting there like watching YouTube or like scrolling social media. So my, my brain is dead for, for an hour and a half. You know what I yeah. mean? And I just don't, I just not, it just doesn't. And you and I not working for an hour. <laughs> I know, right? It way doesn't, behind. it puts me way behind. I was saying yes. that today. I was kept getting, I kept getting pushed off behind and stuff on things like that because we keep doing these social media campaigns and stuff. And I'm like, I am getting nothing done. <laughs> it's like, it's oh. done, but I'm getting nothing done. Yeah. Oh my God. It's so frustrating. Right. So how's your prep? Um, good. <laughs> so okay. I know this is really non <laughs> like, So I'm in a weird mental spot right now myself because I see changes in the mirror. I see changes in my body, but my body weight isn't going anywhere. And yeah. I'm just like, <laughs> I've been at the same weight for three weeks and um, you know, I check in on Thursday, so I've got a few more days here for me to drop a little bit, but still at this point I haven't dropped. And I'm just like, but I wake up in the morning and I've got freaking veins running down my shoulders and through my arms and through my abs. And I'm like, I'm, I'm seeing my, my hamstrings come in. My glutes are sitting up higher and they're coming in underneath. Like I've got a completely different glute shape this week than I did last week. And I'm just like, okay, well, I'm seeing everything I'm supposed to see, but why isn't my weight going anywhere? <laughs> you know what I mean? Mine like, does the same thing. Like they'll I be don't eight weeks in a row, it. I don't drop, but I just keep getting leaner, and leaner, and then I just just keep telling myself, like, I guess I'm just holding on to lean tissue. Yeah. You know, like that's why yeah. I'm not seeing these huge swings. Yeah. Well, I said the same thing. Like, I think that I'm doing the, like, and even Jamie said the same thing. She was like, you know, I see you're significantly leaner, leaner. Like I can tell you're changing. She's like, I don't understand the weight thing either, but maybe that just means you said, like you said, you're holding on to, onto the lean tissue. I'm still, and I'm still lifting just like I was before I started cutting and everything like that. So perhaps I'm still building some muscle while I'm doing this, you Great know? Count. 
And like, I just, you know, it's, it's just, ever since I've worked with Jamie, it's been different with my preps than before. And a lot of that is because my preps before were just about crash dieting and I lost a lot of size. I, I didn't lose a lot of body fat. I lost a lot, a lot of size in general. So it's like the, the, the couple of preps that I've done with her so far it have been completely different. Like previously when I would start a prep in the first three weeks, I would drop freaking 10 pounds. You know what I mean? Like it'd be boom, it's gone. And wow. then like, I would just start leaning down from there. And it, with Jamie, it's a complete opposite. It, like it takes forever. And then I start to drop and then, I, and then I'm pretty stable. Then I'm pretty stable at that point, you know? So yeah. I'm like, I, it's just, and again, I know my critique is always that I need to have more muscle and I need to have more size. So, you know, not losing weight is, is not a bad thing as long as it's the right weight, you know just what mentally. I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And mentally it's just like, I get up and I step on the scale and I'm like, what the, like, yeah. That's not motivating to go do another 45 minutes of cardio. Correct. Right? That's yeah. right. I'm like, you yeah. know, why am I doing this? Why am I doing this cardio? Why am I starving? You know, why am I doing this if I'm not going to drop weight? You know what I mean? Absolutely. So it's that one little thing. And then you look at measurements too. So a lot of people don't take measurements. I do take measurements. Me too. Um, Me too. My measurements do change from week to week. My weight, uh, my waist is going down. My leg is going down. Those kinds of things. My glutes every, every couple of um, weeks will go down. So I'm like, okay, well, I'm, 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 I am going in the right direction. It's just not showing up on the scale. <laughs> but that's why it is important to take things better than just your yeah. body. You know, focus on the photos, focus on what you feel, focus on what you see. Measurements, of course. Like, of course, right. you should be taking measurements. Waist, hip, out, and your left thigh. That's the three yes. that I take. Those are my biggest tells. Yep. But it's it's really important. And I and I see this all the time with my clients, with friends of my net prep. It's so frustrating when you have those weeks in a row where nothing's happening, but you just have to really be real with yourself. Am I following my diet? Yes. Am I doing my cardio? Yes. Am I lifting mm -hmm. to my highest potential? Yes. Okay. Then you just yep. have to stay focused and keep following the plan because you know it's coming. However, yep. if one of those three three things you know you can be better at, mm -hmm. you got to be real with yourself and go, well, that's that's why I'm not tightening that's down. Right. And that's going, what I've started doing like this week, I was like, okay, well, I'm going to pay attention to some of the stuff that I'm eating because maybe that's affecting why my weight's not dropping, you know? Sure. So one of the things that I really like is I like raw vegetables. Like I like broccoli. I like, you know, uh, cauliflower, stuff like that. And I'll Cruciferous them. veggies. Yeah. And I'm like, well, maybe that's making me hold weight. I mean, it could be. And I'm like, so I'm like, let me just cut them out for a little bit and just, just see if that helps. So we'll yeah. see if that helps. Something else is like my guilty pleasure after I get done with working out is I do the Yazo Greek yogurt um, frozen popsicles. Yeah. So those are, they're, they're Greek yogurt, you know, but it's like ice cream, you know? Yeah. So I, I do those post-workout and I'm like, well, you know, maybe those are making me hold retain fluid. Who knows? Right. Yeah. So I'm going to cut those out and we'll see, you know, and I'm just going to do little things like that to see like control the controllables and, you know, bumping up my water, maybe it's my water intake isn't high enough, you know, that kind of thing. I'm like, you know, little things like that, maybe that'll make a difference. So that's, that's all you can do. <laughs> that's all you can do. So that's where I'm at. Like, I, like, I feel great. Like, I feel like I look fantastic. Like I'm, I'm being perfectly real with myself. Like when I look at myself in the mirror after I've done a workout or something like that, I'm like, man, I'm jacked. And like, my glutes look great. I'm really happy with my I shape. loved your check-in photos. That's just the Yeah, sweet. like oh, seriously. Yeah, that. they look really good. They and know. I'm just like the best I, you've ever looked. I, I agree. So I'm like, okay, those are the things I should be focusing on, you know, not the not the number. And the you're allowed though, sucks. you're human. <laughs> you appreciate being, being vulnerable and all those yeah. Around. Yeah, absolutely. And it's like, you know, and I, 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 you know, we'll wait, we'll see what happens. But like I said, I mean, as long as I see the progress in my physique. And I'm like, and I talk, I talk to people all the time. Like, such Jamie, I talk to my husband. I'm like, you see me getting leaner, right? Like, I look leaner, right? Don't I? Am I getting leaner? <laughs> I'm like, oh, like is it just me? Am I, am I just seeing things? Because I think I'm leaner. Exactly. <laughs> I'm like, I, I, I was really going to say, you like have a little bit of diet face this week. Yeah, so I can it. see it. Like, I can I'm see it. it. I'm like, it's, yeah. I'm like, the veins are popping whenever yeah. I start to laugh. I have like one right here. And I'm like, yeah. why? I, know. Right I have two, like you can see them they're right here. Yes. There's one right here and there's one over here. Like oh, they're, where they're, our forehead needs can hang out together. <laughs> know, right? The worst part is like when you go to do like anything um, where you're like hanging down, like if you're doing like, um, I was doing back today. So rows, so yes. anything where you're like down and like the veins just go everywhere. It's like, Oh my God. Get a pump in your head. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, what it's is terrible. This? It's terrible. I've, I've talked about, I've talked to my doctors about that. Like, well, we could put some filler. Like, cause I have like, I have them on my temples and stuff too. Like we can put some filler. In I just there. got some earlier this week. Oh, I'm like, 
fill this out, please. Yeah, I know, right? I'm like, oh my God, just get rid of the veins. Yes. Like, well, we can't like just get rid of the veins, but we can put filler in. <laughs> Awesome. Fantastic. <laughs> yes. Beautiful things that we have to deal with going to prep. But yeah, so the long long and short of it is that it's going well. It's just that it's just that one piece. That darn scale. That one piece, you know? So maybe your scale's broken. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> like I use the same scale. Like uh, people think it's it's funny because like I, like if I'm at a show, I have my scale with me. Me too. So they'll walk in. They're like, was this with the room or did you bring this? I was like, I brought it. It's like, oh, can I use it? I'm like, yeah, sure. Like I bring the same scale with me every time. So I actually have two scales in my house me and too. one scale weighs me heavier than the other one. Okay. So like the, the, the lighter scale, like physically lighter scale is the one that I take with me everywhere. And that one right. actually weighs me a pound lighter than the other scale does. Interesting. So yeah, <clears throat> so I don't know. It's your friendly scale then. It is. I just, I just stick with the same one. So then that way there's not that variable. You Absolutely. know what I mean? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because again, I even if you travel go, scale in my home yeah. scale, and now because I'm traveling so much, I just at home weigh in on my travel scale yes. because I just want that consistency. Correct. And yeah. then also weighing at the same time. Like I always weigh in the morning when I first get up. Like, you know, there, if you've already had your coffee and all this kind of stuff, it's not, that's not your true weight. You know what no. I mean? Faster and that's something up. too, like depending on how you're sleeping and what you ate that night before and all those things can make a difference. And so that's, I, I go back to, I try to make my, my check-in days as consistent as possible. Yeah. So like I try to eat the same things on my check-in days Thursday morning. So I try to eat the same things on Wednesday night, do the same things on Wednesday night. Um, I try not try to the same way. Yes. I try not yeah. to train legs or glutes on Wednesday exactly. because I'll retain yeah. water from that. Yeah. So, and I know, I also know that too, the last few weeks that I've been training glutes on Wednesdays, so that's just how my schedule has lined up. And I'm like, okay, well that could be why I'm not dropping weight too, 100%. because I'm just holding. I'm just holding. So I know that. So this week I've got it set so that I'm doing chest tomorrow, chest, <laughs> chest and, 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 and shoulders tomorrow. And tomorrow's Wednesday. Wednesday. So back right. in with Jamie on Thursday. Yes. Got it. So no lower body tomorrow. So, so I, maybe we'll get a drop. We'll see. We'll We're going to manifest it. I know, right? Cross your fingers, pray. Cross your fingers <laughs> and your toes. Know, Everybody right? do it right now. <laughs> ah, it's a, but it's like, you know, and like I said, it's like everything else feels like it's going in the right direction. It just sucks yeah. when that one piece doesn't want to line up with everything else. So yeah. we get it. We're there. Like I said, we talked about this last, last week about loving yourself in all seasons. We got to love yourself through these, these things too. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So it's all, like you said, those, the body follows. That's right. As long as you're doing everything you're supposed to do then that's, that's the best thing do. you can do, right? Control your controllables. Yep. yep. Which I wanted to mention this because um, I started doing this, I think uh -oh. right after, right after Nashville, I think it's what I did. So I've gotten into smoking cigars, right? I've seen that. Yeah. So this okay. is all my dad's fault. It's all my dad's fault. My dad smokes cigars all the time. Darn dad. I know. And so when I went to go visit back in May, um, he's like, smoke a cigar with me. I was like, okay. So I smoked my first cigar. I got sick, but <laughs> I smoked my first I cigar. That. Oh. Yeah. So I was, here's the thing. You, you're supposed to like, don't smoke the full cigar, right? If you smoke okay. like a half a cigar, you'll be fine. Right. So my nightly ritual now is I smoke half a cigar Okay. and I take these little CBD Skittles that I have. Okay. Um, and then I have this raw, um, raw nutrition sleep the supplement. Yeah. Sleep. Yeah. And all of a sudden my sleep has been a thousand times better. Like I, I, I like I have my little sleep app and stuff like that. It yeah. shows, you know, your quality of sleep and everything. And my quality of sleep has been through the roof That's the last awesome. few weeks in comparison to what it used to be. That's so great. I'm like, all right, well, this is my, this is my, this is my concoction. This is it right here. <laughs> okay. Thanks dad for showing me cigars. It works. I know, right? We won't I'm like, of all things, cigars, right? Like I used to do um, like the CBD, like, like vaping and all that kind of stuff too. And, and even that doesn't do it like the cigars do. And I'm like, all right, well, I guess that's this perfect. is it. And that's something that you and your husband can do together right. at night and yep. before bed and get, yep. you know, just kind of zone out on work and just yep. chill. I love We that. have this, um, this little fire pit in the back. That's like my favorite thing about the whole house. Like mm -hmm. our, our whole backyard is all, is all trees and woods. So you hear all the, all the birds and the animals and stuff all back there and everything. And then it's just, we have this little fire pit. And it's my favorite oh, thing at night is to just sit there and chill. And it's yeah. just like, and you can do that and here in Virginia. It doesn't get really cold. Like, you were here in, in January, even then it's not bad, you know, in comparison. I always tell people like it's, a, it's, it's got all seasons, but all seasons are very moderate. Like it's never super hot. It's never super I love cold. that. So even in, you know, November and stuff like that, I can sit up there and do that. You know what I mean? We can put the fire on, you're good to go. Right. I so, love that. Yeah. Nightly routine. 
especially like with how like stimulated we are all day like unfortunately with our careers we're on computers phones ipads things all day all the time being able to shut it off we have a beautiful backyard too our pool and just go and listen to the water and look at the trees and it is it's very like grounding and Mm -hmm. really good before bed to get rid of all that stimulus yes that's what keeps you up is absolutely if that's important in a contest prep i stress that all the time with my girls sleep and a sleep routine you know it's so silly like make sure that your room is cold make sure that yes. your pillows are comfortable like the, yeah. those matter you know absolutely um but yeah so anyway so all those things those are, those are, that's my new my new thing here now in prep i love <laughs> it smoking the cigars every I night so. if i come up with any kooky things i'll be sure to share them right here first. i even did it in pittsburgh for north americans i went out of the back balcony of the, of the hotel i'm like this is fantastic sitting on the river just look, it's overlooks pittsburgh oh, you know so i'm like this I is great that, hotel, that view i love the that. weather was perfect i'm like all right this is this is really cool this is chill i can yeah, do and this and here i was stuck in florida in a hurricane oh. I know. Well, by the time, you know, by the time the girls came around, the hurricane was over with you guys, right? True. Yeah. 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 I was just dealing with all the aftermath. But yeah, yeah. I had major FOMO. So, but I'm yeah. glad it was. Well, we were going to talk about that anyways. So let's go into North Americans now. Yes. So, um, so, yeah. So it was, a, it was a good weekend. Like, I like the way that they run that show and how, you know, they call it the most comfortable format in the, in the shows. And it really is because you've got all the, you know, guys one day, all the girls one day, that kind of thing and so on and so forth. Um, And then, you know, Sunday was master's world. Um, But I wanted to talk a little bit about when you, when do you know if you are ready to actually go up to the national level and compete in one of these kinds of shows like a North Americans or a nationals or a USA's or whatever. So um, you had some good thoughts on this. So I'm going to go ahead and let you take the lead when it comes to the, the thoughts about going up to the national level. Yeah. So there was, there's a lot of things when it comes to like, if I'm evaluating as a coaching perspective, like when an athlete's ready for a national show. Um, It was funny, I was talking to my husband about our podcast tonight, what the subject was, and his very first thing was, do you think that someone needs to win an overall to go? Mm -hmm. And I I thought that that was a very interesting question that he -hmm. he said, especially after the story I just told you guys on episode one of my experience. Remember when I won my first overall, I did not get my pro card that That's right. And the year that I did win my pro card, I came in second to the overall. So, you know, we, him and I were kind of talking that through. So to answer his question or to start with that, no, I don't think an overall is necessary. However, I do think that top placings are necessary. Uh Um, And also a more realistic overview of the show that you were at. Yes. And who was on stage with you. Did you get first or second in a group of three girls? Right. Maybe you should go to a more competitive class with eight to 10 girls. Right. How big is the show? How big is that caliper? And if you're coming, you know, first or second in a group of 10 to 12 women, then I think that then that, you know, is a better placing or position to go into a national show. With. Yeah. Um, well, but well, also just to just to piggyback out of that. I mean, I, I never won an overall myself ever. And like I was talking about my pro card win um, the two weeks prior, I'd gone into a local show and I took fourth, which was my worst placing I've ever had. But it was only three high classes. And so I'm five foot nine. So I was taller than everybody else in my class. And then those yeah. girls that, that beat me at that, that local show, when we all, we all went into, to universe in two weeks, I was the only one that got my pro card. Very interesting. Yeah. I was the only Very one interesting. because we all ended up in different classes. None of, none of them competed against me. At, at wow. Universe. We were all wow. in different high classes at that point. See? So, you know, like physiques with like physiques, you know, absolutely. and then absolutely. another good example of somebody who's the opposite of that. Um, I posted him on my stories and you, you met him at cuties is Moses. Yes. Um, so he was a massage therapist. He is a massage therapist for massage hope. One of our sponsors for cuties car from the stage. And he was at cuties car from the stage this past year, giving massages all weekend, super sweet kid. I really actually love going and get work done by him. And then he decided that he wanted to compete. Right. So he went in and he did his very first show two weeks prior to North Americans, his first show ever. And he took the overall. And okay. it was just a small show. I think it was, I think it was Pennsylvania Muscle, I think is what it was. It was a okay. show. It was a relatively small show. But then second show, two weeks later, it was North Americans. He goes into it, wins his class, wins the overall. Two shows. Yep. And two shows. Drew's athlete, same thing. He was literally true novice at Clash three days before and then turned pro. Yeah. Yep. 
I'm like, you son of a. <laughs> but hey, man, like when you got it, you got it. Like, and you know, again, going back well, to. We've been going this for six to eight years. Yeah. Still, still haven't gotten their pro card. Absolutely. And I had a girl, this was years ago um, that I worked with. She trained for three years before she ever stepped on stage. Right. So I worked with her on her posing and her, her presence, her suit and all that stuff, the whole package. She comes in and goes into her first local show and she wins the true novice, novice and open overall. And so she decided to take a year off and continue to get better to come back to national level. So she comes in the following year and does a local warm up show. It was a natural show. Um, and she didn't even win her class. Didn't even win her class. Wow. And I said, I, I showed her her pictures next to everybody else in the class. And I said, because you're you're more muscular than everybody else on that in that class. I said, to be perfectly honest with you, I'm surprised you even got second because you don't look like anybody else in this in this show. She was the outlier. Yeah. I was like, you don't look like anyone here. I said, um, and then she was planning on going to Junior USA's the following week. I said, there's still some things you can do going to Junior USA's. I said, but I wouldn't worry about getting this second place here. You know, she's got to run her legs down a little bit. She was holding a little bit too much on her legs and stuff like that. So she went into Junior USA's and a, a week later, won her class, won second overall, won her pro guard. Wow. In just a couple weeks. Just in one week between the two shows. Wow. Unreal. Yeah. So, but and that's, and that goes back to, do you have to win an overall? No, because she didn't look like anybody else in that show. She looked like a pro already. Correct. She was the outlier in the wrong way. Right. You know? yeah, she yeah, yeah. She was on, but not for the rest. Like of I posted people. her pictures up on like forums and stuff. And everybody thought she won the show. Everybody. I was like, nope, she didn't win her class. <laughs> it's like because she didn't look like anybody else in the show right so again going back to what you were saying so yeah and there that goes back to you can only control what you can control and at the end of the day it's just up to you to show up and do your best because mm -hmm. it could be your best that day but it's not what's you know looking like everybody else on stage and it's a really that's the hardest part of our sport especially the bikini category it is so subjective on some days and it's just, you got, you can't give up. You just got to keep rolling and rolling with the punches as long as your mind and body's fresh. <laughs> mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what else, what else do you need to do in order to be ready for a, a national show? So my second point was obviously if you're going to a national show, the ultimate goal is to be a pro. And I am a very, very big advocate or, you know, telling my clients that, you know, if you're, if we're going to a national show, you should already be acting like a pro before you get there. Um, you know, think very simple things like obviously not cheating on your diet and staying consistent with your water and sodium and things like that. However, it's still very shocking to me, which I'm sure, Sean, you you're going to be like, yep, me too. It's still shocking to me how many girls still show up to a national show with polish that's messed up. Like, doesn't even look like they brush their hair that morning. Yeah. Um, not getting professional makeup done. Yeah. They're posing. You did not get a posing coach. Mm -hmm. And these are all things my husband has always told me, and we keep saying it, control what you can control. These yes. are those things. You Absolutely. can control the way your hair looks. You can contr control the way your makeup looks. You can hire a posing coach. If you're starting right. to pose two weeks out from your, sh your show, you're already way behind. Yep. Those things have to be done weeks, months in advance. Yeah, yeah. no, absolutely. You know, and, and you know, shit, Sorry, <laughs> stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Stuff Sorry. happens. <laughs> you know, stuff happens. Um, you know, going back to so this uh, this particular girl that I'm talking about now, she actually did Masters World this weekend. She did uh, on Fun. Sunday, but going into the show, she had already booked um, a makeup artist because she had uh, pulled out of a past show, had a credit. So she's like, "Well, I'm going to go with this makeup artist, right, um, and use my credit that I have with her." It was Friday. She still hadn't gotten a schedule from the makeup artist. She still hadn't gotten a time. Didn't know if she was even booked on the schedule, all this kind of stuff. Then she gets a last minute phone call on Saturday that this particular makeup artist had to leave. So she messages me and says, I should have just gone with you in the first place. Can you do my hair and makeup, please? So I put her into my schedule, you know? That's nice um, to see you. Yeah. I, I, luckily, I had I had time slots. I Good. And, you know, going back to what we were talking about last year um, or last uh, episode, Every year, I tend to have girls that win their pro card and want to compete the following day. So I always keep an hour or two available just in case something like that happens. And that Oh, happens. okay. Got it. Yep. Yeah. So I had time to be able to fit her in. Okay. So thankfully, that worked out. You know, she was able to control that part of it. You know, those kinds of things. And then um, then just some other shit happened. Again, freaking cussing. I'm trying not to. <laughs> Sorry. 
sorry. <laughs> So anyway, <laughs> the YouTube gods are going to get on me though. So I got to be careful with that. So um, anyway, so she goes into the show the following day and there's just some other things that happened. Like tan was too light. Um, the suit, they couldn't glue the suit up high enough on her hips. So because they couldn't glue, glue the suit up high enough on her hips, it kept falling down and that flooded her whole body with cortisol. She got stressed out. She couldn't control her poses. She couldn't do any of those kinds of things. So I, I didn't make the suit. It wasn't my suit. Let me just put that out there. It wasn't me. <laughs> it's not, it's not it, was not, it was not a suit that I made. <laughs> so, um, and then she came out and the first thing that I saw when she walked out on stage was her suit was way too low. And I was like, oh gosh, I was like, it's the lowest one in the lineup. She's figure. So I was like, it's the lowest one in the lineup is that it makes you look super boxy when you have it down that low. You got to pull it all the way up. I sent her, Hi. yeah, I took video and I sent pictures. I was like, look at yourself next to everybody else. It's the lowest one in the lineup. It does not do you any favors. So she's got another show coming up in October. So she's like, you know, we talked the last couple of days. She's like, I just want to be able to know that I did my best to put all these things on stage that I have under my control. She's like, I have the suit under my control. I have the, I have the, the tan under my control. You know, these are the things that I can do. And I screwed them up. She's like, and I don't want to, she's like, I don't want to get off stage knowing that I could have been better, you know? Yeah. And good um, for her for owning it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, absolutely. It's like that's it's, how we continue to get better. A hundred percent. And that, and you know, and that comes down to it doesn't matter what you end up placing if you know you put everything that you could have out on that stage. If I feel good about what I did and what I put on stage, I don't care about the rest. I'm like, yeah. I'm, I'm, good. I'm good. It's not up to you then, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And as yep. a coach, Drew and I always say, it's like our job as a coach is to get the athlete in the first call out. And then yeah. from there, it's up to them. It's up to them to hold their poses, to present well, and then the judges for them to pick who they want that day. That's, mm -hmm. but you have to control your variables in order right. to get into that first call out. That's right. Um, and that goes into the posing too. You know, I think both of us have seen that there's, you know, pretty much two types of athletes, one that comes out and their kind of shoulders are forward and they look really scared and, you know, totally not confident. And yep. you've already lost the judge's attention at that point, unfortunately. And that yep. just comes from lack of confidence. And I, I know for myself, the more that I practice my posing, the more confident I feel on that stage in my routine, because it's a, I'm a well-oiled machine at that point. It's just like training. It's a mind to muscle connection thing. Yes. You, know, you should be able to close your eyes and feel your posing routine and how that front pose feels and how the, and if you can get there, you're going to come out feeling so much more confident. And then mm -hmm. you get that, almost the other way where girls are coming out and they're almost like really theatrical and, moving their yeah. arm and, hair, and then it's just like, whoa, that's a lot. So just trying to find like that, that happy medium, I think is good. Yeah. But that to me, it all just comes down to practicing posing. I think that that really translates to confidence and mm -hmm. assurance and nailing and knowing what the pose feels like. Yes. That and also just paying attention to like, meaning there's so much coverage of these shows now on you know, NPC News Online, on Instagram, everywhere. there's videos everywhere. Watch the people that are winning. Yes. You know, like, like why, why are you not watching people who are winning? Yes. You know, the people that are winning aren't doing anything crazy most of the time. Right. Yeah. They're just coming it's out with confidence. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. know, I sat down, it was, what show was it? I think it was the, I think it was the DC Pro-Am. And I, I was sitting there um, the night before the show and Gary Udick came up and he was like, if you can just tell your girls to just go up there, hit a front pose and a back pose and get off, that's all we need. <laughs> and I was like, they want I, less. Yeah. Now. They, want they want less. Is more. The last that you can said do, that, JM has said that, yes. Gary, I mean, they are all saying it. Less is more right now. Yes. All you got to do is to hit a really confident front and back pose and make sure that you don't drop anything in between. Yeah. That's it. That's, that's it. it. It's really at the end of the day that simple. Yep. Yep. And but, just do it like you like you mean it. Right. Yeah. And I yeah. think that you know, we we get so caught up in the fluff. And and I, I know we're competing for a pro card, but you're not a pro yet. You still right. have that last show as an amateur to earn that pro card. And unfortunately, you only get about 15 or 20 seconds, especially yeah. if there's 20 plus girls in your class. So you got to mm -hmm. make the most of that 20 seconds. Make it count. Yes. You know, and it really starts from the second that you walk on stage. 100%. From the second that you walk on stage, they're they're watching you, and if you have impressed them with that first walkout, they're going to continue to watch you. Correct. If you haven't, they're on to the next girl standing over on the side waiting to come out. Yeah, and so as soon as you're holding that front pose on that stage too, you got to make sure you're on because if mm -hmm. somebody came out before you that 
you know, came out with like a little bit less confidence or they know that it's not going to be in that first call out, they're already looking at that next girl to see what's coming up next. So you, yep. once you are on that stage, you are graded. You are being watched. It's really yep. important. Absolutely. So what else? What are, what are some other things you got here? So that led me into um, comparison rounds. So a couple of things that I see that should not be happening at a national stage, again, with the thought that everybody there is trying to be a pro, these are things that do not happen at the pro level. Know your number. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, know. Number. I, I cannot tell you how many times I look at my number before I go on stage, even if I know it, I just keep double checking. It. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> wants to have their number called and you don't know you what your number there. is and you're just standing there. Yeah. The judges don't like it. They get a little annoyed. Like, just know your number and then also put your hand up if they're trying yeah. to switch yes. and look for that girl that you're going to switch with so you guys can switch quickly. Yep. Um, that That's something that I've, I've seen and I saw a lot this past weekend. And then other things too is there's um, there is a difference of practicing your posing routine and practicing the call out yes and there the call out is about holding the poses yep. and the longevity of the po poses and that's where a girl that's in first or that second place can easily shift spots yes. a second place girl can move where who they thought that person was going to be first or vice versa because as they start to fade or as they start to shake or as they start to lose poses you can make or break your placing. And I, my suggestion is I always pull up YouTube videos of a show and I listen to Sandy. And when yep. she's calling the girls around or moving them around, I'm practicing doing that as well. And it's a real life situation. That's um, exactly what I tell my clients to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just watch those videos. There's a ton of them. There's a ton of them now. Like you, I tell people, I'm like, become one of the competitors in the show. Yes. Right. And yes. do whatever Sandy tells that particular competitor to do, become yes. that person. Yep. Right. And then you can continue to use that same video, just become another competitor in the lineup and just continue to do that. Yes. Practice. Yeah. Practice. Because so I sit there and I, I record the, the the comparisons and even um, like the national show comparisons on average are somewhere between three to five minutes long. So if you can't hold your poses for three to five minutes, you're screwed. You're in trouble. You're in trouble. Yeah. 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 And a way it's to one thing to be able to hit a pose and do your routine and walk off. It's another thing to be able to hit and hold. Hold it, hold it, mm -hmm. hold it. Absolutely. And then I, I go back and watch my video too. And I watch my core control. So like, I'll put it like yes. fast and I'll mm -hmm. see how much like my stomach is moving or not. Um, and, and then just, you know, I think too many girls still practice in the mirror too. Yes. And you don't, you don't have a mirror on stage. So like yep. you don't have that visual cue. So that's where it goes back to knowing what that pose feels like. I know when I hit my front pose and it's wrong. I don't yeah. maybe quite know that second what's going on, but I'm trying to move and find when I know it feels right. Yes. Um, and that just comes to that, down to that practice again. And muscle memory is super strong too. And I will say, yep. What's the first thing that you notice go on a girl when she's when she's losing her her posing? What's the first thing you notice? Waist control. Yeah. Waist yeah. control. 100%. Yeah. Waist control. It's that in and out. It's the heavy breath. Yep. All of that. There was one girl, again, Masters World, I was watching in um, figure. And they're all in their front poses and quarter turns. And her whole stomach's going like this the whole time. And she yep. was tiny through the waistline, teeny tiny through the waistline, but she kept going like this. And that's all I could stare at. Yeah. Showing the floor. Like, oh, God, yeah. Just keep and if she just held it a little yeah. longer, practice vacuums a little bit longer. Yeah. I what her placing could have been that day. Right. Just just controlling a controllable. <laughs> yep. Just being ready to be able to hold it. That's definitely a big thing. Because also when you're in like local shows, a lot of times you don't have to do all that. A lot of times you're right. out there in one call out and you're done. You know, right, right. so when you go up to the national level, it becomes a lot harder because you're going to have at least two, three call outs in every single class versus yeah. sometimes you're in a local show and there's one call out of five girls. You know right. what I mean? Right. The national show is not like that. The national show is 30 girls deep per class. Yes. You know, and there was so. about three or four call outs per class in some of these master mm -hmm. classes. I yes. mean, they, this was a very competitive show. It was. This weekend. It was really cool to see, especially the Masters. I was yes. super, super impressed. And it's funny that you said the thing about studying. One of the things that I had on my to-do list today was I was not there at Masters Worlds on Sunday. And I wanted to pull up the top five winners and see what they were picking. And yep. it is so hard between the Masters and the Open. They do like a little bit of like a more conditioned look. And yes. you know, in the Open, they want more of a little bit more fullness. So that's me studying as a coach. What did they pick this past weekend? So I know how I want to bring my girls in later on yep. this year. Absolutely. Um, 
that's all about studying and kind of looking. But as an athlete, I did this before I wasn't a coach. I wanted to see what they were picking. So I had an understanding of my own sport. We have to take responsibility of athletes that we have to think basketball players, MLB, everybody watches film. This yeah. is our film. This That's is right. what we should be doing every Monday, Tuesday after a show weekend is going back and studying. Even if you my husband says all the time, he's like, you're going to, to study tape, aren't you? I was like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I am, absolutely. Yeah, so just like you said, they give it so, so easy for us. Now we have such mm-hmm. access to things. We can live stream any show. It's still crazy to me when I get on a consult call with a new athlete. I was like, Hey, have you ever watched a show before? Oh no, I've never seen one. Just go live stream one. You don't even have to go buy tickets anymore. I know. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's so easy. And like, it always makes me laugh too. When they look back, at stuff from like 2010 i'm like you know it's not like that anymore right there's, yeah. there's current stuff yeah. <laughs> i'm like you can't hit those poses anymore expect to get rewarded it's not gonna happen i mean became <laughs> different from a year and a half ago it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's you have to constantly be learning and evolving absolutely um, so I mean, that's the art that's it is, of course, the responsibility of the coach. But as an athlete, you have to take responsibility, too. And you should you should want to study and you know what's going on. You know, that's something that I say too. like coaches are, can only do so much. You're in your body 24 seven. Like you're yeah. the one putting yourself on stage. I tell yeah. this to my, my clients all the time. Like, listen, at the end of the day, I'm going to tell you how I think you look best in your poses. But you're the one putting yourself on stage. So if you feel like you look different. Yes. You're, you're wrong, but yeah. <laughs> you're probably wrong, but you're probably wrong, but two colors too, which you can yeah. speak on. And Absolutely. Like or you could say, hey, I think you would love blue. And the girl could say, I just really don't like blue and it's not going to yeah. make me feel the most confident. Okay. Right. Then that's not the suit for you. That's, but, I just had this conversation with one of my girls this weekend. I wanted her to, to wear a bigger suit top so she could stuff it. She doesn't feel comfortable stuffing it. I said, all right. I said, I think it'll, it'll amp up your glam factor and all that, but I understand comfort level as okay. well. I yes. said, so we can go ahead and make this, the suit smaller and that, that way you feel more confident. Yeah. You know, I was like, I wish you would try it this way, but at the same time, I get why you don't want to. Right. Absolutely. So yes. I'm like, I, you know, at the end of the day, I can only give you my two cents. And, and also it comes down to the confidence level. Like you said, like there's things that I think are going to look great, but if it doesn't make you feel more confident, then it's, it's not, not going to work. work. Absolutely. You know, same thing. I, I had this conversation. Yeah. I had this conversation with Jamie when I was with my front pose, she was having me do all these twists and stuff in, in Tampa. And I'm like, yeah, but it hurts so bad. I felt so uncomfortable. I was like, this is not the right pose for me. I just, I just know it's not. And so I've got to find something else. So I just kept, you know, hammering away on it to try and find a better position. And there will be one. And I did. Yeah. Once I got and saw her in Nashville, two weeks later, I was like, I was like, I found the right pose. And then she's like, oh my God, yeah, that's so much better. I was like, yeah, because that other one hurt too much. Like, yeah. I was like, I can't, I'm like, yeah, I get what you're saying and you're seeing. I said, but I can't hold it. You know, yeah. and, I, and that that's going to make a, a difference. Your confidence level is going to make a difference, you know. And I so. appreciate you saying that, too, because, like, I, I know me. I've, I've been a lot better at this. But, like, I'm a martyr. So, like, if like if I – she told me to do a pat pose and it felt yeah. uh, awkward to me, I might have just been like, okay. But and yeah. just suffered through it. Like, good for you for speaking up. And then you found something that worked for you. And I think as women, we can all be a little bit better just speaking up. It's okay. Absolutely. There is a hundred ways to do something. And if you're not confident, not comfortable, yes, we're professionals. Yes, we have our opinion. But there's other things we could say our first idea, and then we'll have yes. a plan B, plan C. So speak up. This is yep. your sport. This is your money. This is your investment. And that's right. We want you to have a great experience. And we that's have to right. do what makes you feel the best. That's right. You know, then that's the biggest thing. It's the communication part. I'm like, I, I can I can work with anything if you talk to me. You know what I mean? Like if the, if we have this this open communication, you tell me you don't feel good like this or whatever, cool, we can fix it. Done. No problem. Absolutely. Just, because, just this is this is not a dictatorship. This is a partnership. This is. I always say that too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not a dictatorship. You don't have to do what I tell you to do, oh, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm giving you my best my best options. You know what right. I mean? But at the end of the day, like you said, it's you. It's you putting yourself on stage. So you have a buy in on this. You know, yes. <laughs> it's not just me telling you you have to do it this way. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, I agree with that completely. So, what's um, your next tip? My last point which was, um, oh, I actually have two, sorry. Um, so if they move you out, mm-hmm. don't let that show on your face. So like, let's meet them out for that comparison round. You're near the center, towards the center, and then they move you out. It's not over till it's over. Yeah. Um, so, so many girls, you know, they get moved out of that spot and they look and they notice that they're going to the end or something and they go, they mm-hmm. know. Yeah, they do. They're going to notice that. Yep. Um, don't don't lose that. Just keep that big smile on your face. And you know what? Almost let that be your motivator. Be like, you yeah. know what? I'm going to show you more. I'm going to get yep. more, you know. Um, mm-hmm. So just 
it's not over till it's over. I've seen multiple times them move a girl out and then move her right back in. They're like, oh, nope. I've even seen them dismiss a girl that was in the first call out, which I, it actually happened, tw- I think I had saw it two or three times this past week. They brought a girl in the first call out, dismissed her back and brought another girl out. Yeah. So even when you're on the side, keep holding because yes. they could, and in one situation, it was a platinum blonde with a blue suit. And they dismissed her to go back to the line. And they brought out another platinum blonde with a blue suit. So they made a mistake. Oh. Never know. So. Just no, I see that all the time. It's like, and I think it happens with more seasoned competitors than not because yeah. they know what's happening. Like they know they're being moved out. Yeah. It's like, but but sometimes all they're doing is they're moving you so they can compare to other people. They yes. may, like what happened with Jessica at the Masters Olympia because she yes. was moved out to the outside. I was looking at that stuff and looking at the comparison shots. So I'm like, no, nah, I think they just have her in first and they're trying to figure out who's second and who's third. Right. I said this is either going to be a huge upset or they just moved her out. Yes. They, know she's the winner. they already know that she's second he's winning this. Yes. That's right. You know, yes. so that can absolutely happen. Um, I know Becky Clawson has talked about that with her pro card win. That's what they did with her. They moved her all the way to the outside because they knew already that she was going to win the class. And then they were judging everybody else. And she ended up winning and winning her pro card. Yeah. You know? And they so, dismissed her and she thinks yes. she's in last place. And then she earns her pro card that day. Yeah. And I see it all the time with girls' faces a lot. And again, a lot of times it's pros and things like that, that I see them on stage and their face just drops when they get moved. I'm like, yeah, just keep smiling. You don't yep. know. You don't and you're know. You're coming back. You're going to be coming back. In yeah. Another, another card. You're going to see the same judging panel. They're going to, they remember us. Yes. They remember mm-hmm. more than you think. Yep. They might not know your name. They might not remember your number. I, I sh- shared the story with Drew or Drew shared the story with me. It was a few national shows ago. I forget where we were. And he was talking to Tyler in the lobby somewhere. And somebody came up to Tyler mid conversation that he was having with Drew. And he was like, Hey man, uh, can I get my feedback? And Tyler was like, yeah, you were class C and you came in third place and blah, blah, blah. And then you were class B, like knew the guy off the Everything. top of his head. Yeah. But maybe couldn't know his name, but he knew him by face. Yep. So they remember things like that, especially if you are do something to make them remember you. Yep, that's right. So, that's right. So, yep. Uh, I've seen it happen before too. Like there was a, I remember, so back, I test judged a long time ago, became a judge a long time ago. So this one show that I was test judging, it was bodybuilders actually. And um, mm. there was like seven, I think it was seven guys in the first call or something like that. It was a big bodybuilding wow. class and they were all really, really good. And, but I'm sitting there and I'm watching this and I'm like, there's a guy over on the side that I thought should have been in first call out. He didn't get called out. Okay. So I'm sitting there and I'm watching this and they're, you know, it's, uh, Gary Udit was the head judge and they're running him through mandatories and uh, they get through the first call of mandatories. And then they realize that that guy should have been in the first call out. Like he's standing over there on the side. He's the only one still standing in a pose on the side. So they pull him down into first call out, right? They start going through the mandatories again and move him in. They go through the mandatories again. They move them in. Oh my God, <laughs> they go through the mandatories again. They move them in. Up he, the show, he ended up winning the show. He ended up winning the show. And that's okay. And yep. I respect that. They made yep. a mistake. And yep. then he ends up winning. Yep. But he held his pose on the side when everybody else probably went. He sure did. That. Well, that's what I said. I was like, he was the only one that was on the side diagonal still up in his pose. Everybody else was just kind of hanging out with their, you know, how the how guys do with their hands on their hips and mm-hmm. stuff, you know? No, he was up. He's like, no, I should be winning this. Like, you could see it on his face. Yeah. That he was like, why am I not in that call out? But like, that's acting like it. a pro before mm-hmm. you're a pro. Yeah. Me. That's right. You know, that's, that's being a professional. Absolutely. Absolutely. hundred you percent. Know? So keep your attitude when you're on stage, guys. Yeah. Keep your, keep your smile. <laughs> your, until your heel gets off the stage, yes. you keep that big smile on and it is never over until it's over. Absolutely. Ever. Absolutely. Okay. So, what else? One, you had one more point, right? I had one more. Yeah. So um, when it comes to polish things like belly rings, mm-hmm. tattoos, hair, you know, extensions, mm-hmm. not this is the way I always say it and the answer is itself. Look at the top five at the Olympia. Yep. Okay. So tattoos. I love tattoos. I got tattoos where yep. I can hide them or things like that. If it wasn't for competing, I probably would have a half sleeve by now. Right. But why don't I? Because no one in the top five at the Olympia has a sleeve or right. anything like that. Mm-hmm. I used to have a belly ring. I took my belly ring out no. because when I started to get serious about this, top five Olympians don't have Everybody a had a belly ring. It's like kind of out. It's like out now. Like nobody has them anymore. <laughs> I put mine out. All I know. Love competing, but it's, I know it makes a difference, you know. Yeah. And and you got to look at those things. You got to let if if that's your goal, you know, turning pro. These are things that are simple that 
I like when I was an amateur, I went and I looked back at the last five years of the Olympia. I looked at what how dangly their earrings yes. were, what bracelets they were wearing, what's too much, what's not, yep. and studying the sport. You know, yep. the sparkly heels. There's you know people have said about that that could be distracting or not look at those details and obviously this goes back to again wearing what you want and your confidence but also being realistic of you know the cleaner look the bikini look that's yes. being reported the top three top five at the olympia that's our standard that's yep. what we should be copying and pasting to who we're turning pro and what we're showing up on the pro level yep you know and going back to like me i have naturally wavy hair right i like it it's fun it's very unpredictable i don't know what it's going to do from day to day some days it looks fantastic other days it looks like crap so i'm like i as much as i would love to wear my natural curls on stage i don't know what's going to show up show on that day. yeah so i'm like i'm not going to go with a style of my hair that could look absolutely terrible right yeah if it looks fantastic, great, but that's that's a really big risk and that's risk. a lot of stress. That's a yeah. lot of stress, you know. Yeah. You know, Brandy, one of our girls, she um, she does the shaved head and she bleaches it. It's really really pretty, like in everyday life, but it's a risk on stage, right? Yes. Yeah. And we've talked about this, like we want her to be able to wear that shaved head, but in order to do that, everything else has to be perfect. Like her back perfect. has to be perfect and all this kind of stuff, and we're not there yet. Yeah. Until until we are, she's gonna wear a wig. It is yeah. what it is. You I love her natural hair, but if that is it. It's got to be everything else has to be got Everything else has to be perfect, especially when you're going to wear that short hair. Your back better be completely even. Yeah. Back, you know, <laughs> and it's got to be a good conditioning thing from the top to bottom, too. What a lot of people don't realize is like when you, the reason why bikini girls and wellness girls wear hair down the back is because your back leans out faster than the rest of you. Absolutely. As a female. As a yep. female. Yep. And in order to stay nice and full and round in the glutes and the legs and things like that, you got to get really lean and then you got to fill out. Well, your back yes. doesn't fill out like that. <laughs> it literally back... looks like a shredded Christmas tree. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, you I look do like that hair flip thing that girls yes. do because my shoulder blades are just striated. If we yeah. move my hair off to the side, game over. And you've got to know your strengths and you've got to know your weaknesses. Absolutely. Now I'm the opposite where I come from figure. So my back is very muscular and round and full. Bubbly. So it's actually really nice when I pull my hair off my back. Now I'm not going to go on my back pose like that, right. but when I do the transition, it gives you me a nice width. And then you got that little the waistline in the back and everything. You got that fullness, the roundness in the shoulders in the back and stuff like that. So it's actually a strength for me. Right. But again, I'm not going to wear short hair on stage because that's yeah. I would take away from it in back pose. Yep. So, you know, you got to know those things. You got to understand what your, what your, your strengths strength are. Like, that, was, that was a really good point because mm -hmm. what works for you doesn't work for me, That's but right. we figure out how, how to make that work. Yep. And going back to the top, the top of the Olympia, you look at Jennifer Dory, she's got the beautiful natural curls and she looks better with natural curls than when she does her hair straight. Right. Everybody else does straight or with the curls at the end and stuff like yep. that. But Jennifer goes with her natural curls because that's the best look for her. Yes. You know, it works. So, you know, again, you got to go back to what works for you. Yep. Um, and on the tattoos and piercings topic and things like that, I just think it needs to not be distracting more than anything else. 100%. 100%. There's some people that have tattoos that I don't even look at. I don't even see them. You know Me what too. I mean? But then there's some people that have tattoos that go down like the waistline and just blur the lines, blur the shoulder caps, blur whatever. Um, and scenarios like that, get yourself somebody who's really good at covering them. Right. And I say and that's that a hard one. That's a I hard know, one. I say that with the caveat of really good at it. Good at it. Yeah. You don't do it really good. It looks terrible. So right. I see yeah. really good ones though. Yeah. And I've yeah. seen really bad ones. Yeah. And so sometimes you, people come to the sport and they've already had these tattoos yep. and you're dealing with them. Yep. Totally. But mm -hmm. don't get any new ones if you can control it. <laughs> yeah. Or at least ones that, that are going to be shown in your poses. Yes. You know, like 100%. everybody, I think everybody on stage has a tattoo or two. Yeah. Like, everybody does. You know, I mean, when I'm in a bikini, you can see all, I think I have eight or 10. I mean, they're mm -hmm. smaller ones and they're all around my body. But again, you could see my muscle bellies and, yep. you know, Yep, but you still want to places where they're going to be distracting. <laughs> right, I know. Like, I, I wanted to get another one, and I'm thinking, you know, I want to get, like, underneath on, on my, yes. my biceps and stuff like that. Because, again, that won't show when I'm in my pose. Right. It's against my body, you know? So you have to think those, keep those things into, into, into consideration when you're doing all that kind of stuff. Polish is huge. And like you said, little things, like, you know, making sure that your makeup doesn't match your suit, you know, just little stupid things like that. But they make a difference when you're on these stages where everybody's polish is perfect. Yes. And yours is like, oh, my God, her eyes are blue like her suit. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it's just it, 
it just it's just too much. Yeah. I saw I saw some figure suits with these big honking jewels on them. I'm like, oh my god, those are so ugly. Like it's just it's just distracting. Distracting more than anything else. I'm like, yeah. I, I just don't understand it. Compliment to yeah. you. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. not you or drowning you out. Yep. Right. So just make sure that when you're going up to that next level, that you take all of these things into consideration because everybody is, you know, and, and, and if you want to be in that top call out, you have to take all of these things into consideration. Um, plus it's really expensive to go to national level shows. So you better keep all these things into consideration because you're just shooting yourself in the foot if you don't do that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you work so hard to be there. Yeah. You work at a national level. And unfortunately nationals is not the show to cut a corner, like right. make, getting, just getting a makeup artist, like right. do that at the, at your regional show, do a really good YouTube and like if you're gonna like try it there, try it there. But if you're going to nationals, like you've already worked so hard, like go get pampered. Like That's right. you know, like invest that in yourself. At least your makeup, do your own hair. You know, yeah. like, mm-hmm. I definitely think that makeup. Uh, we've talked about this. Makeup mm-hmm. it needs to be done professionally, especially yes. stage makeup. It is yes. an art. It is yep. not the same as right re- a regular makeup artist. That's, right. That's why there are specific makeup artists at each of these shows that understand. Right stage makeup and yep. I can't do my own makeup. I would yep. come out looking like a, a white ghost to my brown body. I, I, and you got to understand that the person too, because like, for example, I, I, again, I work with a lot of master's women, right? So you're not going to put the same kind of makeup on a 40 year old that you would put on a 20 year old. That's a great point. It's, you know, you, you got to know that as a makeup artist, like I know, like I know that one of the trends right now is to do really dramatic makeup, almost almost like a drag queen kind of makeup. But you put that on somebody who's in their forties or fifties, and they are going to look like they're in their sixties and seventies. Like, they look it's old. not. It's it's not a good look. Yeah. So you have to understand the balance of all of that too. You know, and you have to know your strengths. Again, going back to since I do hair and makeup and stuff like that at shows, I know I'm really good at my own makeup, and I'm actually really picky about makeup. So I know doing my own makeup is a stress reliever for me. Versus for most people, it's a stress or stressor, you know, <laughs> for me, I want, but I want to take my time too. I'm going to take two hours to sit down and, and, you know, blast my music and do my makeup and have fun with it and all that kind of stuff. Now where I've had um, professionals do uh, stuff for me in the past is my hair, because for me, my hair is a stressor because I can't see back here. Right. You know, so I can't yep. see what's going on back here. I've had times where I've tried to do my own hair and end up with like a bird's nest in the back and stuff like that. So it's bad. So I've actually, I've had more people do my hair at shows than I have had them do my makeup. Wow. So you just have to know what works for you and what's best for you. And the same thing goes for like the tanning and stuff. I will never be a DIY tan person. Me neither. I'm just not. I start my tan ahead of time because I need to develop f- further. But when it comes to actually show day, no, I am not I don't doing like- that. That is too much stress for me. Mm-hmm. I need somebody to just spray me. I need to stand there and not think. <laughs> yeah, and I've done both. I've done both. Yeah. I love I love the protein DIY. I, I think it's great for my athletes. For me, it stresses me out. And yeah. I just want to go show up naked in a tent and just say, someone take care of me. Yes. <laughs> That's what exactly. makes me feel better. And to other people, right. they feel more comfortable in their hotel room. They don't yep. have an appointment time. They control it. They That's can right. rinse when they want to. And that's great. I've done that too. And I, like I said, I've, I recommend DIY to my clients all the time, but for me personally, it stresses me out. Yeah, absolutely. Agree. I so, want to follow up with one more question though. Mm-hmm. When you say that masters needs a different look, do you suggest yes. more of a lighter, fresher look? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. So specifically, yeah, specifically with um, the, not so much the, the, the um, foundation color, but the, the contouring. So okay. Okay. not as much contouring, not as much as, as what you'd see on somebody um, younger, also not as heavy on the eyes. Um, you know, a lot of times when you get older, the, the skin starts to droop and things like that. And the more makeup you put on somebody, the more, the more closed off the eyes become. You see the, the wrinkles underneath the eyes, things like that. Um, brighter, fresher. Um, Love it. I, I will never put a dark lipstick on a master's competitor, ever because it just makes them look 10 times older. So yeah. brighter, fresher, always. We want bright colors. We want pinks, things like that. I would never put a red lip on a, on a master's competitor. I rarely put a red lip on a girl on stage anyway. Let yeah, alone a master's not my competitor. favorite. Yeah, I mean, I, there's there's very few people that can pull it off. Pull that off. You know, but the, the, the more, the darker the colors, the older you're going to look. Got it. 
So, you know, when we're talking about eyes, things like that, we're talking about golds and browns and in general, golds and browns work well anyway, but I'm not doing any dark sure. black makeup in the right. face or anything like that. You know, right. even yep. the, even the eyelashes, a lot of times we don't want to do big, huge eyelashes. This is across the board. I see some girls do way too much on the eyelashes and it completely closes off your eyes, you know, especially if, especially as compa as master's competitors, those things are heavy. Yeah. And they, they, if you, you already, already have, have a lid. lid. Yeah. If everything's yeah. already coming down a little bit, you don't want to do that. You just don't want to do that. You know, I see some of these eyelash extensions now. I'm like, yeah. oh my God. Like, how do you, I'm like, how do you even see? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just too much. It's too yeah. much. So the well, lighter and fresher that makeup is, the younger and fresher you're going to look. Right. Perfect. I just so, want to hear your opinion on yeah. That. And again, like rosy cheeks and things like that, like, you know, young, uh, younger girls Useful. can get away with, yeah, younger girls can get away with more neutrals and browns and stuff like that. As you get older, pink's bright, think, think fresh. I like that. Cool. Like you're cool. healthy, you know, that, that helps kind of me when I'm telling yeah. my girls what to do. So yeah. Thank you. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so all those things take into account and there's plenty of makeup artists out there that we all have our different styles and stuff like that too. So you can go to somebody who you like the look that they produce. Right. So okay. just because, just because somebody is not your cup of tea for, for you, there may be somebody that is that, uh, that has a little bit of a different style. It's like yeah. anything else. It's an art, just like any, like having a coach, everybody's yeah. going to have a little bit of a different style as a coach, you know? Absolutely. So yeah. You just choose it, the person that you feel like is going to do the best style for you. Yeah. I've worked with a, I, I love pretty much all the makeup artists that are, you know, around or at all the shows, but definitely like Amber LeBeau is my girl. So if she's at a mm -hmm. show, I'm with her because her and I have our flow. We have our style. Yep. We have two or three looks. We go, which one are we doing? And, and, yep. but it's taken me years to find, yeah. you know, her and that relationship. And, you know, in the beginning, I would just try everybody and yeah. try to see what I like and what I didn't like or inspos and things like that. And then what, uh, the more you do it, you find your look and you just become a well-oiled machine. And right. it, I, that's also, I guess, a good question to you is like, how do you feel about like needing to switch it up or switch up suit colors or like things like that? Like to me, if it works, like stick with it, you know, mm -hmm. if it works, um, stick with it. Yeah. Um, it's rare that I'll tell a girl to change if she's doing well, you know, if she's placed in the top five, things like that. Don't change anything. You know yeah. what I mean? But at the same time, like if you want to try something, if you're not, if you're not winning, if it's not a winning look, then play with it. Right. Absolutely. So I had a girl this weekend that did win her pro card. Um, I've working with her forever and I've had her in like a teal color and a red color. She's a dark skinned black girl and it looks beautiful on her. Both of them did. She, but after masters nationals, she was like, I kind of want to do pink suit. Cause I had my one girl, Brandy that won the overall at, at nationals in a pink, in a pink suit. suit. And um, she related to her and her look and everything like that. I said, sure, let's do the pink suit. So we, we, put together a pink suit for from from masters to, to North Americans. And she put it on the day before she, like the day before she went on stage was the first time she put it on. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> Cause we were cutting close on the, on the timeline. Right. Thirsty. But it fit her perfect. And like, as soon as she put it on, she was like, Oh my God, I love this. This is me. Blah, blah, blah. And she walks out and wins her pro card. So amazing. That is so yeah. cool. It was, the so pink, awesome. it was the pink power. The it was pink. the pink power. <laughs> Pink was risky and it then was. green one in pink yes. and uh, yep. it's just crazy. Yep. I so, love, I love you know, it was, it was just like that. And she, even she said, she's like, I just felt it in this suit. You know what I mean? Like sometimes you get to that point where it's like, okay, this is your color. You know, I like to try different stuff, but I started, started red last year and I was like, okay, anytime I put anything else on other than red, I'm like, this just isn't it. I'm yeah. like, you know, it, it's, it's pretty but it's just not it. Red is right. it for me. Red is it for me. Like that's because yeah. I always say too, like the color has to be your vibe as well. You know, yeah. for me, like red is my vibe, you know, it's very sexy. And that's like, kind of, that's my thing. I'm like more smizy and stuff on stage. I'm not the big bubbly personality. Girl next kind of door. Thing. No, yeah. I'm the, I'm the, I'm the sexy girl on stage is what it is. I got to embrace that. You know, Absolutely. again, going back to who you are and your confidence and, and what your thing is. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Right. And right. it worked for her. She yep. wanted the pink. She knew. And there yep. we go. Yep. She was and she not looking at her best and feeling her best that day. Absolutely. Congratulations Absolutely. to you guys. That's Thank awesome. you. Thank you. Yeah, That's yeah, awesome. yeah. I was really happy for her. She's missed her pro card. She's been in the top five at like every show that she's been in for the last like three years of nationals. So it's like, she's, 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 she's really, yeah. It's like, we just got to push it up and over, push it up and yeah. over. So she finally did. So, um, but that actually can take us into the last thing that we wanted to talk about um, with, Tyler coming out and talking about having softness in bikini, right? So talking about this girl right here, 
um, she had, I would venture to guess, probably the smallest glutes in the top five. Um, she was, she won 45 and over. I think it was 45 and over that she won. Okay. Um, but she was the most conditioned on stage. She was the most conditioned. Um, and, you know, Tyler just came out and did this update on the criteria for bikini and saying how in bikini they want soft and full and round, like Maureen and everything that won the Olympia. That's your standard. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, I hear the, the rumblings, like, why are they rewarding harder uh, at North Americans and things like that? Well, the, 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 the fact is, is that as we get up into these master's ages, softer doesn't work. <laughs> you know, skin texture is different. Um, fullness and roundness of muscle is different. All of that stuff is different. Metabolism is different. Metabolism is different. You see, you just, it's just not the same. And as you get older, all of these things change with your physique. So the judging does tend to go a little bit harder and a little bit more conditioned because that's when you look like you're in shape. Correct. If you're not conditioned enough, you look like you're out of shape versus when you're in your twenties, you can be conditioned and then pop it and fill it out. It's harder to do when you get up into your 40s and 50s. You know, it's very, very rare that you can do that when you're in your 40s and your 50s just because of your body and how it responds to things. Yes. So, um, so when it comes to the judging criteria, the judging criteria is the same. It's just they reward based on who shows up that day. Um, if there's nobody that fits the criteria, they got to go with somebody that's close. And they got to go with somebody that's in shape. Judges will always move to somebody who's in shape and they can tell they put the effort in and they came in ready and prepared. They may be a little bit too conditioned, but you can tell that they actually put the work in versus somebody that comes in out of shape. They're Correct. not going to reward somebody that's out of shape. They're just yeah. not going to do it. So while, yeah, while she may be a little bit softer and maybe a little bit closer to the criteria, technically in reality, she doesn't look closer to the criteria. She looks out of shape. Right. So, right. and it's just different when you start going, um, like I said, higher in age versus versus lower. And you see that even in the men's categories too. It's not just a women's thing. As the men get older, they get harder and they get grainier and they get harder to, to fill out too. It's yep. the men as well. You know, you see that when you go up to the master's ages for the men, the men's bodybuilding are grainy as hell. Striations yeah. everywhere. You know but what the I mean? the biggest guy, it's the king most conditioned and who's in mm -hmm. shape. That's right. That's right. So it's, a, and the other part of it too, is like, you know, especially as women, as we lean down, we get looser skin and things like that. And that typically shows up in the glutes and that typically shows up in the, in the abdomen. Right. So, you know, you've got it, you've got to come in conditioned in order to get rid of that. Yes. And have density. If you mm -hmm. can, you have mm -hmm. to have some muscle to kind of push against that skin. So mm -hmm. there's not as much skin there. And that was, the, my girl Holly that was on stage, she was definitely the most conditioned in that mm -hmm. top call out, maybe a little too conditioned, but that was her feedback after the last show. However, what showed up that day was a little bit of a more dense and yeah. a little bit of a softer look, but Holly wasn't as dense as these girls. And that yeah. was her feedback. And I could totally see it. If we get more density in those glutes and in those shoulders, and we come back maybe with the same conditioning next year, it's lights out. Yeah. But it was because of that lack of density. And then the girls are a little bit softer. So they had more of that Maureen look, but it is harder with the masters to the open, especially as a coach, how to peak that because they do yeah. go for a more conditioned look in the masters because of the variables that you said, yeah. the skin and things like that. Um, so when you're confused by that, like what I did this morning, like I just said, is I went and I looked at all the photos from last weekend and look at those comparison rounds, because once you start looking at the comparison rounds and you're like, Okay, oh, now sense. I see it because that was what was the best that day in that class. And unfortunately, the judges have the criteria, but sometimes nobody on stage in front of you is matching that criteria. So you just have to pick what's the closest and best. Right. right. And depending on the judging panel that you're in front of, some of them may lean more towards conditioning. Some of them may lean more towards size. It yes. just depends on what their personal preference is. If you're not, if you don't have somebody there that fits the criteria, you got to get whoever's closest. Yeah. And there's a, like you just said, there's a lot of different variables that can get you closer or further away. Yeah. Um, and you know, the biggest thing, I'll be honest with you guys, the biggest thing, especially in masters is when you turn around and glute sag. Yep. Yep. If your glutes sag, you're out. You're out. Right. Yep. So, and another good example, like I said, my girl that won her car, her pro card, um, Shauna, she last year had issues with loose skin underneath her glutes this okay. year. 
she came in a little bit fuller with that so that she was able to get rid of that skin, but also the suit cut. So when you look at the suit cut in the back, the way that she has it positioned, she has it positioned the, where it is so that it hides some of the looser skin. So she doesn't have the smallest cut on stage, but it was the right cut for her glutes to a great point. mask the, the, the issue. You know what a I great mean? Point. So yep. smaller is not always better. Nope. Right. And the, and the suit cut bottom matters. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it should be looked at by a professional. You shouldn't That's just right. be buying your suit online without talking to that suit maker or that professional. Right. You should be looking at your check-in photos and saying, no, you need this cut or right. high here for sure. Yep. yep. So, you know, you keep all those things in mind because I think it's funny sometimes you hear the, the critiques and things like that from people. It's like, yeah, but you didn't see them in a different suit cut. You didn't see them when they were flatter. You didn't see them when they were posing different. You didn't see them when they were doing these other things. Absolutely. If you've got a good presentation coach, if you've got a good coach, they're bringing you in on stage at your best, right? It may not be exactly the criteria of what somebody else is doing or what's, you know, the, the, the suit cut matter or whatever, but you're doing it because that's how your body looks the best. You right. know, right. And, and you have to try all those other things too, to, to figure it out. You know what I mean? 100%. But, you know, that's, that's where having the professionals help you is important because you've got to find what's going to work best for you. Because again, yeah. with Shauna, her suit cut was, was probably, was probably the biggest one, honestly, on that first call out, but it worked for her glutes. It worked for her. So just saying. Good job, John. <laughs> I'm not, I told you, like, I might, I might have been in the store for a little while. You might honestly. know what you're doing. <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. That was, no, that was a really good point, though, because I see that, too, all the time, where that, yeah. like, oh, that cut's not for you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And it's like, so, and, you know, going back to what, uh, you know, Tyler said and everything like that. So at the end of the day, you're not going to have Olympia winners in every show. You know, you're not going to have somebody that fits the criteria perfectly. And if you notice, when he was talking about Maureen, he even gave Maureen critiques, you know, about how she missed on her conditioning going into the, the Arnold. She, she was great on her conditioning going into the Olympia, but she missed on it when she went to the Arnold. That's why she didn't win the Arnold. You know, so even the best girls in the world are still getting critiques to be closer to that that mystical criteria, that that box that we're all trying to fit inside of. So. You know, you have to realize that just because one show may reward a little harder, it's because of what showed up that day. The Absolutely. judges have to get as close to that that box as possible. And if that box doesn't exist, they got to start fitting people in there somewhere. Yeah. You know, so that the judging criteria isn't changing. What's changing is the people on stage. Correct. So. Yeah. And the sooner that we realize that as competitors, I think we could be a little bit more peace with our placings too. As long as we can finish the show and know that we did everything possible, right? That's We're right. not like, oh man, I shouldn't have ate that or I cheated here. Or maybe right. I could have went 10 more minutes. As long as you're not doing all that, you come off and you left no stone unturned. You know, at the end of the day, it just wasn't your day that day and that's okay. That's right. And that's some right. girls look really great alone, right? You're that's like, right. you're watching all these girls online and wow, she looks great alone. Mm -hmm. And then you put her up next to others and that's when things are really exposed. So yes. that goes back to, to like not comparing yourself to others and try not to get into that whole game because you never know until it's actually in front of you on stage, what it's going to look like and what it stacks up to the other physiques on stage. That's right. Absolutely. You don't know until you stand next to everybody else. So Absolutely. bring your best. That's all you can control. That's control, all you can control. control your controllables. And that's that's a perfect place to stop for today. It is. <laughs> it is. That's it. Control yeah. what you can control. Yeah, control what you can control. Do your best to bring your best. And that's all that you can do as a competitor. You know, everything else, everything else is up in the air and up to chance. You know, a little, little luck and opportunity fit, fitting together, right? <laughs> that's it. That's it. So with that, we will be back again with another episode of Behind the Bikini next week. Um, as always, guys, didn't say this at the beginning, subscribe. <laughs> subscribe like comment um comment below <laughs> you like that um oh, yeah yeah wherever the comments are um make sure that you send in anything that you'd like us to cover as well for questions things like that um as you can see we're going to kind of go over current events and stuff like that each one of these these episodes these podcasts we do have a new um ig as well so feel free to follow us on there it's behind dot the dot bikini really easy <laughs> so um you'll find all of our our little uploads and stuff like that there as well um appreciate all the feedback so far i hope you guys are enjoying it like i said comment away keep us uh, keep us rolling in those algorithms as well that helps and uh and we'll see you back here next week can't wait <laughs>
<laughs> yes, send us ideas. That's what we we just love the ideas. I I have a bunch, Sean. I don't know if you do too. For oh yeah, the box that we went. So maybe we'll go over those for next week. But yes, awesome. keep sending us what you guys want to see because this is for you guys. We want to educate. We want to inspire. We want to share. So the more that you guys give us, the better that we can do. Wonderful. We'll see you back here next week, guys. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.